Hey, it's Alex from Android Central, and this is the HTC One E8. This is basically a cheaper version of the M8, the current HTC flagship, in a polycarbonate chassis with one or two feature changes. From the design, you can see the E8 is clearly an HTC phone. You've got the trademark boom sound speakers around the front, and a physical shape that's more like the HTC One M7 or the Droid DNA than the M8. The E8 has a curved back and flattened sides, and the border around the screen tapers around the edges like the M7. And you can see how the E8 compares to the M7 and the M8 here. Roughly the same size as the M8, but more reminiscent of the M7 when it comes to the general shape and in-hand feel. Colour-wise, you've got the matte grey HTC One E8 here. Feels really nice in the hand, it's got a very soft, soft touch finish, kind of like the Nexus 5, maybe a little bit softer than that. It also comes in glossy white and red versions, which are a little bit more reminiscent of some of the butterfly devices that HTC sells in Asia. And it's actually worth mentioning, this is a phone mainly targeted at China, Russia and India. Nothing on any Western release plans for the E8 just yet. In terms of ease of use, we've complained the HTC One M8 with its slick metal design feels a little slippery in the hand. By contrast, the E8 is much easier to hold onto, partly because it's plastic, partly because of the more angular design. Certainly you don't feel like it's going to slip out of your hand as easily as the M8. On the inside though, specs are mostly in step with the current HTC flagship. It's powered by a Snapdragon 801 processor at either 2.3 or 2.5 GHz depending on where you buy it, 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of storage, and microSD support. HTC hasn't skimped on the display either, the E8 has a 5 inch 1080p panel just like the M8 and it looks just as good as the M8's. Around the back you can see HTC switched up its camera setup a little, the E8 uses a more traditional 13 megapixel BSI camera, not the Ultra Pixel plus Geo camera found on the M8. What well, that means is you lose out on some of the low light performance of the M8, and also some of the depth sensing effects, but obviously you do capture more detail in daylight. Image quality so far seems to be in line with what we've been getting from the HTC One Mini 2 and Desire 816, the two other phones from HTC that use the 13 megapixel sensor, which is to say they're pretty good, but not quite up to the level of some flagships. On the software side, it's mostly a very familiar experience, HTC Sense 6 and Android 4.4.2 KitKat. You get the Blink Feed home screen experience with news, social and app updates, along with the usual home screen feeder stuff. The E8 also supports HTC's motion launch tech, which lets you double tap the screen to unlock, or swipe in various directions to jump into Blink Feed or your regular home screens. And that's a good thing to see, given that once again the power button is in kind of an awkward place. You also get most of the HTC Sense camera experience, including the Zoe and dual camera shooting modes, and the full featured HTC Sense gallery app with video highlights. There's only one rear camera though, so you won't get any depth sensing effects, and the still shots you take in Zoe mode are limited to 4 megapixels, whereas everywhere else you can take 13 megapixel images. On the whole though, the HTC One E8 is a mostly faithful recreation of the M8, in a less flashy but arguably more ergonomic exterior. You miss out on the metal design and some of the camera features, but despite that the E8 is a really solid high-end phone, and any other manufacturer might well have released this phone as its flagship and called it a day. So we're going to put the E8 through its paces and bring you some more detailed thoughts in a full review very soon. In the meantime, check out our handsome report for more on the HTC One E8.